when city news got to the regional secretariat of the national ambulance service in koforidia some personnel on duty were quiet sad and sobering after the news of the death of their colleague broke this morning they tell city news their lives are in danger abraham tete a driver with the ambulance service in somenia who was on his way to help save the life of a pregnant woman and her baby who were in distress unfortunately lost his life after he was shot twice by armed men who were robbing innocent victims at Asesiesu on Thursday. Rahel Owusu, the emergency medical technician who narrowly survived the attack, is still traumatized. She spoke to City News about the incident. We were supposed to transport a pregnant woman who is in labor, that is preterm, at 31 weeks. So when we got there, we were asking, um, can they manage the case? They were saying that even if the lady give birth, uh, they don't have incubator to put the baby inside. So we have to transport the mother immediately. We did our assessment and then we set off. We got to uh, uh, a village, which I don't know, but that is before uh, you reach Assisi. So there is a curve, a sharp curve there. It seems like there were mountains. So under the mountain, we got there. At least the driver was speeding initially so when we got there he thought maybe there was a, an accident rta case so he started slowing down not knowing that um, there were armed robbers on the road so when he slowed down they told him to off the light but initially i all that i could hear i was at the patient compartment with the pregnant woman and then the relative so all that i could hear was a Pull. Then the pole, no? I thought maybe the vehicle um, tide has blasted. So I was, I was quiet. Then I heard the second shot. Pull. Then I realized that the car has stopped immediately. I didn't hear from our driver. The driver didn't say anything. Then I realized that it was a gunshot. Then I said, Jesus, it's arm robber. So I took my phone from my pocket. And that place, there is no reception. You can't make a call. So they were shooting around the vehicle that maybe if somebody is inside, the person would die. But the bullet didn't penetrate through the vehicle. So they forced the car to open. And when they opened the vehicle, they, they called me. I should come out. I should bring my money, my phone. So I told them that they should take it. I don't even want it at all. I don't even need it. So they were searching me. They were touching me all over my body. They were touching my breast. They were, they were molesting me in the car. So I told them that we don't have anything. We are only transporting a pregnant woman. That time the lady is in labor. The lady is bleeding. I don't know what I should do. So they told us that we shouldn't come out from the car. They called me outside. They called me outside and then they pointed the gun on my head. Telling me I should off the engine so that the beacon lights will go off. I told them I don't know how to do that. So they forced me and I went through the driver's side. I saw, I saw my officer in cold blood. I don't know what I should say. <laughs> so I tried. The, the, the gun was, was, was still on me. So I have to try my best and then um, off the engine. So I off the engine. And they told me to go back into the vehicle. So we were in the vehicle. We never came out. All that I was doing was to pray to God. And the pregnant woman was shouting in labor. What could I do? They said, I shouldn't touch her. I shouldn't do anything to her. I should leave her. So after that, initially they attacked four vehicles. That's, we were the second um, car they attacked. So after that, that was around 1.30 to 2 a.m. in the morning. I was praying that at least God should perform a miracle for us. So the fifth car that they attacked realized that it is an armed robbery case. So they turned their back and they, they were running. So the, the armed robbers were also chasing them. That was the time we also had our freedom to, to call uh, control, to call family members to help us. So the, after that, uh, I, one of the drivers, that's the first driver that was attacked, uh, drove the ambulance. We, we picked the 
my officer, the driver at the back of the patient compartment, drove the ambulance to Tetekwashi uh, Hospital. That was where they were able to suction all the fluid from the mouth, the nose, so that he can get air and then breathe. Rahel Owusu called on government to ensure justice is served. What I can say to government is our job is risky. He should do. We need justice. I need justice for my officer. He should come in for us. It is, not, it is not only the police, the military that they seek justice. We also need justice. We need justice. That is all I can say to government. That he should help us and seek justice. The widow, Vaidate, can't hold her tears and is still in denial. She wants government to assist her cater for the children. The government will do something about this so that I can take care of the children. So that I can take care of my children. It is an emergency. <laughs> how? How can I live without my husband? Uh. I, I have to live there. Eh? That's how you want to save my is it my thief? I could get a baby. It's not three months now, it's two months now. Let's see what's happened to me. <coughs> they are prayer and everything. Financial, they have support me. Yeah. Vital life. Yeah. The Deputy Eastern Regional Administrative Manager of the National Ambulance Service, Felix Owusu, led a delegation to the family of Abraham Tete at Somenya to officially inform them about the passing of their son and to commiserate with them. Abraham Tete, a member and an instrumentalist of the Church of Pentecost Central Assembly in Somenya, left behind a wife and two children. For the family, only justice can heal their pains. Peter Coleman is a member of the family. If it is something that is a planning thing, then at least there is executives or uh, this thing to be able to find out and know why. How can this thing be happening like that? Because I, I know that as an ambulance car, even though they're armed robbers, there's no way they're supposed to shoot him. But as the thing comes, I can't say and I cannot speak to someone and I cannot say somebody would do it. They want this thing should be fair for we to know why this thing happened to our son. Now this is the wife with two children. Since in the morning, they just forced her to take this egg and then moth. I don't know whether she's able to take. For which you know. And then how the government was able to cater for the the wife and then the children. Even as we are talking now, the mother too she is sick. And she is the one taking care of the mother in village. So this thing that has been happening now, who is going to take care of the mother and then the wife and then the children? Surprisingly, the Assessor Police Station located a minute's drive from the exact area where the armed robbers attacked the ambulance is yet to be commissioned after it was constructed a year ago. Residents who are worried about the series of robbery attacks at the particular spot say they are living in fear. When it reached night, I saw police people who mount their cars and things here to guard the place but as for the police station i don't know when they will open behind me is the ambulance bay where abraham tete on a normal day would come and pack his vehicle here but today, it's empty. Family members are in green. And we are calling on government to support them, take care of their kids and wife Abraham left behind. 
for City News. Now we are Somenia.